Ben is, has given us a question on taxation as well. I'm going to put um, the annexure as well on the screen here so that you guys can see. This is the annexure for Ben's question. And before we even go to Ben's question, I want us to um, look at the annexure and sort of analyze the annexure and then work from there onwards. So the annexure says to us, SARS tax rates, there's that word again. So you, can you see that it's important for you to know what we're talking about when we talk about SARS? It says SARS tax rates uh, plus medical aid credits. Now we've got something new, medical aid credits. So those are the type of things we need to be looking out for. Um, for two tax years ending 2000, I mean, 29 February 2016 and 28 February 2015. So you can see it was a leap year and then it was just an ordinary year that we were having. And then we've got the rates here going on down. It says the year of assessment ending 2009 February 2016. So we've got for 2016 and then we've got for 2015 happening over there with the different tax brackets that we are given as well. So you can see a little bit of a difference between this tax bracket, which is tax bracket one and tax bracket one, and it's two different years. Look at the difference um, in the tax brackets as well. 2015, tax bracket one is a bit lower. Let's look at the second one. 2016, the tax bracket then goes a little bit higher. One thing that you do need to know about tax brackets um, in South Africa is that you do need to pay, um, you do need to earn a minimum of a certain amount for you to pay tax. And that amount varies from year to year. It changes from year to year. And your question paper will specify if um, in that particular year it has increased or it has decreased. So you need to pay attention to those little um, nitty gritties going on over there. So we've got the two years. So sometimes you will get the two years that you need to compare against each other. And then we have something called a tax rebate. So a tax rebate. The word rebate simply means refund. Okay, so it's just a fancy word for refund. Tax rebate is just a fancy word for refund. So don't panic because um, I've found sometimes that learners will panic when they find a word that they don't understand. But with taxable income and taxation, you need to know certain terms such as um, rebate. Rebate is a very important term. You will find a rebate, especially if you need to use it. The first thing that you need to know and notice about rebates, the first thing is that everybody qualifies for a refund. Everybody qualifies for a rebate, but it depends on your age. So it depends on what age you are. Let's go see um, what happens here. We've got the first one, which is a primary rebate. The first thing that you need to know about the primary rebate is that every single person qualifies for the primary rebate. And then we have something called a secondary rebate. I'll just write number two there for secondary rebate. Secondary rebate, what you need to know about it, um, is that they'll specify who qualifies for the secondary rebate. So this one is for persons who are 65 years and older. In addition to the primary rebate, this means that if you are 65 years and older, you qualify for a primary rebate plus a secondary rebate. So it depends on your age. And then we have the last one, which is a tertiary rebate. With the tertiary rebate, for persons um, 75 years and older, in addition, so anytime you see the word addition, it means you're going to be adding the rebates together. Don't be scared. Um, in addition to primary and secondary rebate. So I'm just going to give a quick uh, recap of that. Rebate is a refund and everybody qualifies for a refund. Primary rebate, everyone qualifies for a primary rebate. Secondary rebate, they will specify in this particular case, they told us that anyone who's 65 years and older qualifies for it. So you will be adding your primary rebate with your secondary rebate. And then your tertiary rebate is your third one. If you're 75 years and older, then you qualify for all three rebates. So here it says to us that medical aid credits in respect of monthly medical aid contributions. For the taxpayer only, it depends on the year as well. It varies from year to year. So you can see that for 2016, 
it was a little bit more than for 2015. Then first dependent and then additional dependents. Stunning. Let's go to the questions um, that Ben gave us. So you saw now that I went through that and I could understand what was happening. Because sometimes we'll go through a question paper and we've got no idea um, of what's happening. But with taxation, it's all straightforward, really. You get your table and then you need to just analyze what's going on in your table. Let's look at the first question um, that Ben sent us. It says, explain the impact of the tax rebate and the medical aid credits on the tax payable. So... The tax rebate, um, what you need to know about the tax rebate is that it will make um, the tax that you are going to pay less, okay? And the same thing applies for your medical aid. So for, let's just write that down so that you can have an idea um, of what I'm saying. So that's question one, tax rebate. So what the tax rebate does, so tax rebate um, reduces, it reduces tax payable. That's what your tax rebate does. And then the second thing, they said the medical aid refund. What your medical aid does um, for you in terms of your tax is that it reduces taxable income. Okay, that's the one that we are going to be looking at right now. So let's look at the next question. That question is four marks, so it means you'd be getting two and two. That's what they need to know um, in terms of the effects that it's going to have on those two um, things over there. The dealer calculated that her annual tax due to SARS, so that's South African Revenue Service, would increase by only 150 rand. From 2014, 2015, um, that tax year. Um, so we need to verify all these calculations. So I'm going to read that again. The dealer calculated that her annual tax um, due to SARS would increase by only 150,000. So what we first need to do is calculate the taxable income. This is where the source comes in, the juice sort of comes in. So in order for us to calculate the taxable income, number one, we saw that this person is earning, we are told that this person is earning 742,000. So they wrote it as million. But if you convert this number, it will give you 742,000. Now we need to go and see where this number falls under in terms of the tax bracket. And for the tax bracket, we will be using 2016. So if this person is earning 742,000, it will fall under the very last tax bracket. And if, and if it falls under the very last tax bracket, the first thing that you do when you are calculating taxable income, you take the formula exactly as it is. And the formula says to us, 208,587 plus, 41% of 40 tax income. Let's just erase that. Above. Ooh, this is the one thing that a lot of people do struggle with. Above 701,300. So this formula I've written exactly as it is and exactly as it was given to me. Let's go and see that. 208,587, that's what's happening over there, plus 41% of taxable income above 701,300. This is a very, very difficult um, thing for learners to work around but you use the formula exactly as it is stunning now let's go and plug in our values so 
I write my 208,000 as it is, 587, plus I'm going to leave my 41% so far as it is. I'll write my little bracket. Now I'm looking for the, uh, the income above 701,300. And simply what that means is that you need to subtract how much the person is earning um, by the amount that you have been given. That's all that you need to do. Don't try to think of too many things. So this person is earning 700. We have been given the amount. This person is earning 742,000. All I need to do is subtract that amount. That's all I need to do. Once you have this step, then you are moving, literally. 208,587 plus, I'm using board mass now. I don't want to rush myself. I don't want to rush myself. Of, let's go and subtract um, the two numbers that we are given. And that number is 742,000 minus, 701 that I was given, 1,300. That gives me 40,700. 40,700. That means I need to find 41% of 40,700. 208,587. So now what do I do? I find... 41% of 41 that amount. I'm using board mass so that it's not complicated for you. Let's go calculate that and see what it gives us. 41% of 40,700. That's 16,687. I'll write it there, 16,687. Let's just double check if I am writing the right number. Stunning. So I'll just rewrite that number over there. I add the two numbers. And it's, it's long, but it's worth the marks because now I've been given five marks for this. I mean, eight marks. 208,587 plus... 16,687. That gives me 225,000. 225,274. Stunning. So we have calculated the annual taxable income. Okay, and the next thing that we need to do now is that we need to now look at the rebate that this person qualifies for. We are told that this person is 48, meaning that they do not qualify for a secondary rebate or a tertiary rebate, but they do, however, qualify for a primary rebate. So let's go and see what the primary rebate does look like. So if you do go up, um, you will see that the primary rebate for 2016 is 13,257, meaning that the refund that this person is going to get is that 13,257. Um, so we go and we subtract it from the amount that we have um, worked with over there. So that is 13,257. And... If we do, it's going to be 225,274 minus that 13,257. It's going to give us um, 212,017. 212. That's a mistake. Uh, 212,017. So this is the annual. So if you were asked for the monthly, 
that this person would be paying, it means that this person um, is paying 212,017 per, per year on tax. But if you want to look at the monthly, all you do is divide it by 12. That then gives you 17,668. 17,668. Every cent counts, so we will be writing it down. Rounding it off to two decimal places is and eight cents. So it means um, that this person every single month will be paying 17,668 and eight cents um, on tax.